Well, this is part 16 of Federalist number 10. We were talking about faculty, faculty, the use of faculty in the Federalist. And uh, I said that this book, at least two chapters of it, it's by Daniel Walker Howe, H-O-W-E, are, uh, are very relevant to this making of the American South, okay? Making of the American South by Daniel Walker Howe. It's very important if you get a chance to read those two chapters. Um, okay. With a $20 phone, I'm sorry, the memory sometimes goes uh, short on me, and uh, that's what happens. Sometimes some of these videos get truncated, but I am determined to go as far as I can with this phone. <coughs> until it gives up on me. Okay, I said uh, one of the things about faculty, remember he used the word faculties of men, and I said if you were to break faculty into three categories, one of them would be reason and rationality, one would be prudence, prudence self-interest in a good way, not self-interest in a selfish way. That you're prudent, that you make the wise choice, that you, you, you don't go by your impulse. And then the third category of faculty, if you were to just generalize it, okay, would be passions. Not the way we use it these days, but like I've said in other videos, passion something that you just do by by the whim by <coughs> something that you uh, just do on an impulse without thinking and reflecting on it too much so these three go hand in hand and in different human beings they exert different levels of influence. A person that becomes really wise is that person that has reason and rationality take precedence over the other two. You think about things, you think things out, you look at the experience of others and definitely experience of yourself. <coughs> so, uh, so just kind of, this was just a hint of what a faculty is. So here, he says the diversity in faculties of men from which the rights of property originate. We all have talents. We all have different talents. You know, when somebody could be your brother, your sister, you say um, he or she has got a great voice. He or she is a great uh, piano player. That in turn can be a faculty. It's a talent. Because if that talent is nurtured, it could eventually lead to a line of work and that line of work could not only be something that give you, gives a person happiness, fulfillment, but also makes them money. And that becomes, at the end, a property. And that's why he says, the diversity in faculties of men from which the rights of property originate. So one faculty leads to <coughs> gaining property, a level of property. Uh, you might become rich, you might not. Or let's look at the other one that they might be talking about. Let's say somebody has interest in buying lands. Land here, land there, and then... Um, building a building on it and then selling that, and that, that could be their talent, that could be what they spend a lot of time on, and it'll eventually 
uh, lead into making money and uh, property. So that's another form of uh, a faculty of mind that we all use and in the end it gives us property. So that's kind of in a rudimentary way it's what it, <coughs> it's what he means when he says the diversity of faculties of men from which the rights of property originate. So different people have different talents, they put it to use differently and at the end of the day maybe after a few years they own property and the amount of this property could be different. <coughs> and then he continues, is not less an insuperable obstacle to a uniformity of interests. Different people who have these different faculties and go in a line of work and make money, then they might end up at the end of the day being in different groups because they see that their interests will be protected this way. And we will see here in the Federalist that he will mention that like merchants group together because they see that if they group together they might be a little bit more powerful to insert influence on the lawmakers. Okay, that's one example. And then there's different different groups that form because of uh, the way they've earned their property, they've made their property. Let's say you're carpenters and that's how you make your money. Then you feel like there are certain laws that are being passed that somehow make your work either harder or make the cost of purchasing things a little higher <coughs> or make it difficult for you to do your work, then you group together and as a group lobby and uh, influence the lawmakers that way. So this is where he's going with, with this, is that different faculties uh, at the end bring you different levels of property, different ownership, different levels of ownership and it could end in a way where these people who have the same uh, jobs or who have uh, the same methods of making money, they group together and form a party or form a faction. Okay, I'll read the rest of the paragraph. From the protection of different and unequal faculties of acquiring property, okay, different people have different levels or different levels of faculty or they put it to use differently and the amount of property that they possess at the end of the day might be different. The possession of different degrees and kinds of property immediately results. And from the influence of these on the sentiments and views of their respective proprietors ensues a division of the society into different interests and parties. So these different people that uh, find out at the end of the day that uh, it is better to protect their property or the way they make that property by grouping together. So here's one of those first instances that it says this is, this is a given. In a free society, different people will do different things for a living, to make a living. And this will lead to different amounts of wealth acquired by these people. And to protect this wealth, a lot of times they end up grouping together <laughs> and that's how an interested party, a faction, forms. And there is no way around it. If you're a merchant, you know that it benefits you and the other merchant 
to trade, to be able to trade easily without a lot of tax being laid on it, without lots of tariffs, without a lot of uh, all sorts of tax duties, without, uh, let's say, a lot of regulation, shipping regulation, this and that. You don't want government to make it harder for you. So you decide to group together to protect your property, to make as much as you can, as easily as you can. And that's how groups and factions and interests form. And Madison here says, there is no way around it. If you live in a free society, this is a given. You can't do anything about it. I know this took a long time, but make sure you read, uh, if you can, Making of the American Self by Daniel Walker Howe, chapters 2 and 3, okay? And we'll continue in the next video.